what we're going to do today is very different than uh, the regular guy getting up and, and preaching at you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get you very involved, and I can only do it if you interact with me. I do not like the sound of my own voice as much as so many pastors do. <laughs> I like to hear from you. So please, when we get into it, please get as involved as possible, especially you young people sitting back there. I don't want to see you playing with your phone or you know, uh, whatever you guys, texting the guy sitting next to you, which you don't know how to talk to. Can't look them in the eye, but you have to fix them. Just kidding. Um, but um, once again, Pastor Jeff has given me the honor of standing over here. <clears throat> By the way, how'd you like this worship? Wow. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. We've already had a lesson. Where did Adam go? Hey. Thank you so much. If God's willing, and I'm invited back again next time, and it seems like every time I'm here, Autumn is here too. I don't know if it's uh, bad fortune, good fortune, I don't know which one it is, but uh, I almost felt a breakthrough. If we had only waited a little bit longer, if we had only learned how to be quiet and listen to God. We don't have to do anything but show up on the scene and allow him to do what he does the best. Next time, if I'm here on, we're going to just worship. And expect God to show up and wait on him until he does. And you might say, well, what happens when he shows up? You'll know when he shows up. What do you expect when he shows up? Man, I expect nothing and I expect everything. I have tasted that. And as Origen said, once you taste God, you become like a wino that starts looking for a jug of wine under every bush. Because God will get you addicted to him. That's right. And if you don't know what that means, then ask him to get you addicted to him. Then you know what that means. Before I go into teaching, as you might know, I spent uh, eight weeks doing a class with five people here. And uh, I asked one of them, Sophia, to come up here and just talk about what she learned from the class. I have to tell you, it's taken me a long, long time, a lot of convincing for her to come up here. She's one of the shyest people I know. And uh, uh, it was just marvelous watching her change. But I'll tell you what she did to me later. Come, come on up here. Good morning. She said, I'll, I'll do it from just uh, stand up where we are. Do I have to come all the way to the front? I said, yes. <laughs> OK. Well, um, going into the class, um, after the first day, I wasn't too sure if I wanted to stay in the class because he talked about we have to leave, and I'm like, I'm not a leader. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry. The first day I asked her, would you pray? I've never seen a brown person turn so red. In my life. <laughs> yes, I didn't even know how to pray. Oh, uh, I didn't know if I was touching. Do I need to touch it? <laughs> and uh, I said, no, just pray. So um, after a period of time being in the class, um, I really learned how to connect with God. And I really learned how to be quiet and listen and spend time. Because a lot of times before the class, 
I would pray, but I wasn't really, I didn't really know how to shut things out. Like, I would think about what I needed to do the next day, or can you help me do laundry, or what, how to really pray. And, uh, and it really, this class has really touched my heart. <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> But uh, I love praying with the Lord now. And then uh, it makes me feel good every day. <laughs> and I practice it every day. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I have a gift for you. Uh, every one of the people who were in my class will get the gift. But Sophia, this is for you. And I'd like you to uh, just show everyone what you just got. It's a rock. <laughs> what do we do with it? <laughs> Why do we put it in our mouth? So we can shut up and listen to the Lord. Because as long as you're running your mouth, you don't know how to listen. And this is the best thing for you husbands, too. It cuts back on a lot of fights. I got the biggest one, and I tell you why. I carry it in my pocket. Because the last day of the class, I asked everyone, right now, close your eyes, what is the Lord telling you? And this shy young lady looks at me and said, the Lord just told me to tell you, Shaw, shut up! <laughs> and it came out from her heart, and I knew what she meant by that. So I went and found me the biggest rock, so I can <laughs> put it in my mouth. And I really do practice what I teach. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. There are little bites behind my backpack with everybody's in the mouth. We still have one bag, so. I just read an article called The Power of a Pause. And it talks about how Anglophones, meaning Americans, Anglos, have a hard time, and the Europeans, Western Europeans, have a hard time with silence. The silence makes us absolutely uncomfortable. This is a secular article. It's not Christian. And it talks about how the Chinese take advantage of the Americans when it comes to business by just being quiet. So this is how it goes. I'm the American. I'm talking to a Chinese person. Actually, that's funny. I'm Iranian. I'm talking to the Egyptian. So, so. I tell the Chinese man, we give you $50,000 to do this job for us. And the Chinese person just sits there and stares at me. That makes me uncomfortable. I said, okay, how about $50,000? Still doesn't. How about $25,000? Just because he's quiet, I feel uncomfortable. I feel like I have to fill in the blanks. I keep talking until I ended up giving the man 25, 50% more than what he really deserved. <laughs> By him just being quiet and not doing anything. We Pentecostals don't know how to be quiet. We in general don't know how to be quiet because silence makes us very uncomfortable. And yet it is through silence that God speaks to us. There's power in silence. There's power in being quiet. There's power in learning how to shut our thoughts off so we can hear God's voice. But that's another subject. Uh, what time do I finish? 11? 11? 30. 11.15? Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, come on, man. You guys didn't show up to quarter or 20 after, you know, so I got to hold you over. 
uh, Hawaiian time? It's more like Iranian time, bro. Uh, we always, with Iranian culture, we always said when someone invites us to their house, and then the Iranians said, is this Iranian time or American time? You know, because Iranian time means I'm going to be two hours late. So uh, we always lie to them. So it's the, you know, we said the meeting starts at six o'clock when in fact it really does start at eight. So we make them come on time two hours later. But let me give you a little bit better setup and then we will start talking. I was going to do a really uh, uh, professorial teaching, but forget it. We don't have time. And someone said, oh man, I said, oh, thank God. <laughs> Suppose, the question is here, it's this Indian villager, illiterate guy in India, who after working hard in his field one evening, he's, he comes home, and Papia realizes his wife hasn't prepared the meal yet, so he goes to the village center to see what's going down, and he notices there is a strange looking guy speaking. So he joins the crowd and listens to this foreigner talk about God. A God who had a son. Who decided to appear among human beings in the flesh. Now, Papia believes in God. In fact, he believes in 350 million gods that his village believes in. <laughs> his gods are Hindu gods. They come and go as they please, but this God that the man is talking about only showed up once. These guys get married and have wives, and then sometimes they're more human than human themselves. But this man's God only showed up once among the humans, and there's no talk of his wife. There's only a father and a son. The foreigner's God is called G-O-D. Papia's God is called Dabudu. Which have very little in common with each other. Papia believes that there are no categories when it comes to, unlike the Westerner who believes there's God, angels, demons, humans, plants, animals, objects. Being a Hindu, he believes they're all the same. He believes that if you're a good human, you can come back as a god. And if you're evil, you come back as an animal. So his concept of God that this man is talking about is absolutely different than what he believes. So far so good? Upon hearing the gospel, he sends something in his spirit and instinctively, he bows his head and prays to this God that the foreigner is talking about. He senses something. However, the foreigner is going to leave, not going to come back for another six, seven months. The few pieces of literature that he gave Papia, he can't read it anyway, he's illiterate. All he knows about 
Jesus is a couple of stories that man just said about him. On the way home, he starts to ask himself, can I go back to my temple again? Do I have to leave any of my culture? Can I, which God should I pray to now? My question today is, is, is it possible for Fatia to become a Christian upon hearing the gospel for the first time in his life? When his knowledge of the Bible is less than what we're teaching right now to five-year-old in a Sunday school. If he is, isn't that giving the gospel away so cheaply? And if he is not, does he have to go learn Greek and Hebrew? Does, do, do we have to be such, such elitist and so informed before we come to follow Jesus Christ. The problem here is with the way we communicate. I get so frustrated when people tell me, oh yeah, we preached at this church last month and 500 people came to the Lord. How do you know? Because the Bible says if the Confess with the mouth and believe in the hearts. Are you in you know those 500 people's hearts? How do you know? So this has to do with the way we communicate in general. It has to do with what we call bounded set and center set. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. This is where you come in. I've set up the background. I've given you enough information. Now, you can shout it out anywhere, okay? So don't wait. Don't raise your hand. Just shout it out. Let's talk about what's an apple. If I ask you, what is an apple? Fruit. What? Basic red fruit. A delicious fruit. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You call me a fruit? Okay. Uh, okay, it's a fruit. It's delicious. Red. It's, I'm sorry, it also comes in green, right? So it comes, right? It's not just red. So it has, it's multicolor. What else? I knew there was going to be a smart aleck here. It's, it's a computer. Yeah, it was. It's a computer. Okay, what else? It's good? Well, it's delicious. Good, okay. What else? It grows on a tree. Very good. It grows on a tree. What else? Sweet or sour? Uh, sweet and sour. Okay. They're de degenerative? Oh, regenerative. Okay. Okay. Very good. That's that, that really is uh, excellent. Size, different sizes. It can be rotten. It can be uh, 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 really green, not uh, uh, fresh. I mean, uh, ripe yet. So it can be rotten, uh, fresh, and green. Okay, still an apple, regardless of status. Yes, a man, I told you, don't raise your hand, just shout. <laughs> what a teach? Oh, you take it to the <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, you know, if I say what an apple, that's not the first thing you think. Oh, that's something I give to my teacher. I mean, anymore, especially with our kids today, they give a lot of other things to the teacher, not an apple. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anything else? It could be dang. It could be what? Dang. It could be dang. What? D a n k. Dang. I, what, what is dang? I don't know what that is. That's vitamin C. Okay. 
<laughs> the, the, why am I doing this? Because we get the characteristic, essential characteristic of what an apple is. Line it up, put a boundary around it, and we say, from now on, when I say an apple, I'm referring to all these categories. All right? This is for, a sake of, for the sake of communication. We all have bounded sets in our communication. So when I say pencil, we all know what a pencil is. I don't have to describe it every time I talk about it. It's a bounded set. An apple is not a banana. And in order for a banana to become an apple, it has to cross a boundary. And once you're in, you're either an apple or you're not. A, there is no a banana. An apple and a banana. You either are a banana or you're an apple. You cannot be both. True? Agreed? Okay, so this is how we describe an apple. Now, this is where I want you to be as honest as you can be. Do not get theological on me and do not get hyper spiritual with me. You can't do that. Be honest. And this is the question. Hey, for the first time, I'm uh, uh, streamlined, uh, no, live streaming this on Facebook. So, because I have a friend who's in uh, Colombia, and I, I let him know that I was going to be speaking here. He said, is it going to be live streamed? I hadn't even thought about it. So I got here, I thought the service started at 9 o'clock, so I was here at quarter to 9. And, and uh, trying to set this up to see if she'll show up on Facebook. But anyway, so these, this is for you, man. There's only one guy watching us right now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, don't you guys have anything better to do than watch someone else on Facebook? <laughs> okay. Ready? Tell me, what is a Christian? Follower of Christ. Very good. Follower of Christ? Everybody agree? So do the Mormons. Follower of Christ. So, what about a Mormon? One who follows false Christ. One who what? Follows false Christ. False Christ. So you have to not just follow Christ, but the correct one. So, who's the follower of Christ? One who has the correct theology. Okay? Right away we jumped into it. What else? It can't be just any follower. It's got to be one who has the correct theology according to what I believe to be the correct theology. Not just any theology. Come on. Young people, tell me. One who lives by Christ's example. Lives by Christ's example. Okay. This is by God's word. Example. Okay. Has the Holy Spirit. So if you're from Church of Christ, you cannot be a Christian because they don't believe you're receiving the Holy Spirit. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What else? See, this, these are all very nice and theological. One who loves the Lord with all your heart. Could someone please tell me when it gets to that point when I can really know what all my heart is? Hmm. What is all my heart? I don't even know what third of it is, let alone all of it. But I'll write it down anyway. 
still we're, we're here, these are all theories. Follow the commands. Uh, well, I think if you're following the, by examples of, and follow of Christ, we are assuming that you follow his commands. But uh, uh, what was the fifth one? Someone said that. Uh, all your heart. All your heart. Love. Love. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Love the Lord with all of your heart. Okay. Very good. By the way, again, so the, the JWs, the old witnesses believe that Jesus is your Savior too. Come on. Again, they're following, following the wrong Savior. They're not following the, my correct theology Savior. We're forgiven. Okay? Again, if I'm an outsider and looking at you, I don't see these things. What is it that I need to see? Love. Love? Okay. Now we're talking. It shows love. Joy. What else? Moral joy. If you find any around here, let me know. We took the happiest religion in the world, called Judaism, and we turned it into Western Christianity. We took the joy out of it. What else? Um, you, they have problems with sin or what? Sin knows he's a sinner. Okay. Anything else? See again. This is the only place where we talked about outside appearance. Everything else is referring to something inside and outside I cannot see. What about going to church every Sunday? What about reading your Bible? What about believing that Christ is coming back? What about, you know, these are all the things that we believe in. And invariably, hardly ever people talk about it. What about not smoking and not drinking? What about being able to speak in tongues and prophesy? What of We, again, have the categories here, and we put a boundary around it, and we say, from now on, when we say Christian, we are referring to these characteristics. One thing you need to talk about is, you must repeat the sinner's prayer. <coughs> you have to know exactly what day you were born again. You cannot be half pregnant. You either are pregnant or you're not. And we all have our own judgments. I don't think she could be a Christian. Look at the way she's dressed. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as we have judgment in our hearts, we cannot show compassion. The more judgment, the less compassion. This is not to say that I'm talking about anything goes either. I don't know why we always have to say it's either that way or way on the other side. There's a happy medium somewhere. So, from now on, anytime I say Christian, I'm talking about this. You either are inside or you're out. You cannot be either here or there. You have to be, I'm sorry, you cannot be here or there at the same time. You're either here or you're there. And in order to get in, as I said, you have to say the sinner's prayer. To break the boundary, you have to come across. You cannot be an apple and a banana at the same time. And once you're in, you can be old, young, disciplined, undisciplined, 
Educated, uneducated, knowledge, no knowledge, disciple, not disciple. You're in. You've made it. That's it. All you gotta do is say, jam bada bim bada bam bada boom boom, you're in. <laughs> we say, come. Christ will accept you just the way you are. Come. And the poor guy comes in. Now that you're in, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't go over there, you can't smell this, you can't eat that, you can't see that. But I thought Jesus accepted me the way I am. Well, that's Jesus. This is church. Two different things. <laughs> I can say this, these things, ladies and gentlemen, because I come from a Muslim background. I see things differently than you do. I come from a background that had, like Papi, I had no idea of what Jesus had done on the cross. In fact, what I believe was absolutely different than what you as a, 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 a Christian uh, born uh, into a society uh, believed. I didn't believe Jesus died on the cross. I didn't believe he was Savior. I didn't believe he was Son of God. Certainly, I didn't believe he was divine. So, we call this Christianity. By the way, don't misunderstand. For the sake of communication, we need to have this. I am not against Orthodox theology. Don't misunderstand me. I'm just trying to challenge what you call a Christian. There's only one slight issue here. I talk about as to read his Bible, as to pray. Has to give, go to church, has to give, has to have its own devotional time. It's all part of being a Christian. Are you with me? Yes? Good, thank you. I feel very secure when people get quiet. <laughs> I feel like I got a blanket, fill in the blank. So, there's only one, one small problem. See, I know a pastor who knows the Word of God forward and backward. In fact, he knows the whole Bible by heart. He has won more people to Christ than Jesus himself. I'm exaggerating, okay? Just to make a point. When he speaks, it's just like God himself speaks. Just one small problem. Last night, FBI arrested them for kitty porn. Is he in or is he out? Wait a minute, but, but 30, a split second ago before I said he was arrested last night, you all thought he was in. Is, so he's in, can I put on kitty porn here then? No. So, 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 so it's all right to be in here, but uh, also, as long as nobody else knows anything about it, it's okay to have kitty porn. See, this is the problem when we have this rigid way of looking at what Christianity is. This is the problem with the bounded set. When I called upon Jesus, I was riding my motorcycle, some of you have heard it, 80, 90 miles an hour. As I said, I didn't believe it was divine, I didn't believe he died on the cross, I didn't believe the Son of God, I didn't believe in a lot of things you guys take for granted because you're born and raised with Christian background, most of us. All I knew was if anyone could get me out of the mess I was in, it would be Jesus. And I said, Jesus, if you really who these people tell me you are, meaning the my Christian friends, I'll accept you if you give me good grades at school. All right? That was the extent of my sinner's prayer. In my heart, I didn't believe in anything that the Bible says about Jesus. And you know which God I pray to? Allah. The only God I knew.
Six months later, as I'm reading the Bible, I come across where Thomas tells Jesus, your Lord and my God. So I wrote on the margin of my Bible, Jesus is God. Now, if I had died prior to coming to that revelation that the Bible says only God can show it, because that's what John, uh, Paul, uh, Jesus told Paul, flesh and blood does not reveal that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. If I had died before coming to that knowledge, was I in or was I out? I was out. Boy, you got a pretty, pretty mean God who says, I'm not going to accept you because your knowledge is not total. Only the Americans can get saved because you have enough knowledge. But we are us from Muslim background because we don't have what you got. Is God that little? That small? The problem is how we communicate the gospel. Thank the Lord. See, the problem with this Bible said is that we're left here. That's it. We're in. That's it. We don't need to be discipled. We don't need to grow. We have no expectation of the person to go any further. We just leave him at the cross. That's it. We just bring him to the cross and that's it. And when we talk about, about discipleship, it means more information. However, we have a, another set, quickly, this set is called a center set. In a center set, everything moves back and forth according to the center. In our case, we make this cross our center. Now, I did that once and someone said, you mean Jesus? Okay, so that we will not offend anybody who put down Jesus. Oh, you mean the Trinity? Okay, I put down the Father and the Son here too. Are, are we happy? Good. And this uh, way of commu communication, everything moves either towards the center or away from the center. You can be very close to the center by walking away, or you can be way down here and going towards it. You can be circling way out here, if you want to put it that way, or you can be circling over here. Okay? There's a boundary here. This person is walking away, so he's out of the boundary. But this person is going towards, he is in the boundary. This person is going away, out of the boundary, this person is close to the boundary. Okay? There's a boundary, but it's fluid. It's always going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The whole idea is how much closer can you get to the center? There are areas of your life that you're walking away, but there are areas that you're walking towards. There's a man here. I always give this example. His name is Maj Majid. Majid came to my Iranian church 22 years ago. Right before he leaves, he walks up to me, and the man looked so ugly, he would tell you that the kids were afraid of looking at him. 
His eyes were back into his socket for this far. His skin was leathery because he was an addict. The night before he'd been arrested for DUI, and he was deportable, divorced, and he comes to me and goes, Pastor, pray for me that God will help me. And my first thought was judgment. You guys go mess up, and when you got nowhere else to go, you turn to God, as if God cares. All God wants from us is to show up on the scene. He'll do the rest. So I prayed for him anyway. 20 years went by. At the time, my Jeep knew less about God than even I did. But he began his journey towards the cross. First couple of months, he was uh, still, with, after the church, he would stop by the bar and have a couple of drinks. Several months went by, he would go to the bar and just have oranges. Eventually, he quit. Eventually, he joined AA. Eventually, he went to school, got his degree, and became a counselor. And for the last 20 years, he's been struggling with who? Christ is. Two years ago, he calls me. He said, Pastor, Jesus is my God. I don't know why I was so stupid. It took me 20 years. I said, what happened? He said, he revealed himself to me. On the other hand, we got this pastor over here who knows everything, but was caught in kiddie porn. He's walking away. He's out of the boundary. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called discipleship. If we want to disciple people, we got to watch, care enough to see whether they're walking towards the cross or walking away from it. There's got to be enough trust among us that this brother can walk up to me and say, I have this issue and knows that I will not judge him, but I pray and forgive him and work with him. And at the same time, you know how many people told me, hey, my Jeep, come on, this guy doesn't even believe in Trinity. He cannot. Oh, shut up. Neither did Paul, or Peter. Well, neither did Paul. If he hadn't been knocked off his donkey, <laughs> I had to stop and look around and see where I was speaking. He would have never accepted Jesus. It was the experience of seeing God face to face that changed his life. And this is what this man needed. But watch them, pray for them. And eventually, today, he believes Jesus is his God. And he, he this, if there is a day that he is not experiencing God, he calls me and cries that I did not experience God today. I don't know how you live. I cry out to God every day to show himself to me. I'm in. I got no problem with going to heaven. I know. I am inside the box. But that's not enough for me. I want to experience his presence every moment of my life. I do whatever I can to experience that. And I want you to be so uncomfortable when you're not experiencing that you'll be like the desert fathers that we talked about in our class. We'll leave everything behind, live in the desert, in solitude and silence, praying nonstop for God to show himself to you. Yes. The Muslims all over the world come into Christ. A lot of them have no idea about what we call Orthodox theology. All they know is when they call upon Jesus, He showed up, healed the sick mother, gave the man a job, and He feels a peace that He didn't have, feels a joy that He never had, victory over depression that He never had, and He says, this God is real. I'm not saying he was, shouldn't be taught Orthodox theology, but it's not the priority, not 
to me and certainly not to God. It's not the issue of whether you're in or out. The issue is are you walking towards the center? Are you walking towards Jesus every day? Do you want to be closer with him? Are you happy? Are you just content with where you are inside the box? Or you want to break that freaking box and get closer and closer to God?